He should have no right to do that. But we can understand man's anger. You know, you speak like that. But he leaves the culprit out. And he leaves the three other brothers, of, three other sons of his, and picks up the innocent little child. You know why? Because Canaan became famous in history. So this, whatever family this guy belonged, he had something against the Canaanites. So this is the concoction, the word of man. So Allah says, فَوَيْلُوا لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِهِمْ So woe to them who write the book with their own hands. ثُمَّ يَكُولُونَ حَازَ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ Then they say, this is from Allah. لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا كَلِيلًا That they may reap some little reward. وَوَيْلُوا لَهُمْ مِمَّا كَتَبَتْ أَيْدِهِمْ So woe to them for what they write. And وَوَيْلُوا لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ And woe to them for what they earn. Mr. Chairman, this is the last. Pastor Dawan and Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Kabir! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! There is one question from the sisters, but I guess what we can do is... Uh, if you don't mind, yes. even though you said yes. it's a final one. Mr. Chairman, my daughter there, you know, has raised so many issues, you know, in a brief, very few minutes. I don't know whether I'll be able to do justice to them all. But uh, talking about opponents or enemies, you see, you can take this word in the sense that the Christian is using it. He is calling us heathens. If you read the books written by your own people, they say, how lost are the heathen? You know, heathen means kafirs. And who are they? All that are not Christians are heathens. Kafirs, we, unbelievers. I know that you wouldn't consider us unbelievers, but this is what your people say. My friend, Jimmy Swaggart, you know, I'm listening to his talk on the video, and he says, uh, he says, I love you all. All. But, he says, if you do not accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior, as your God and Lord, you are not my brother. Then what am I? He said, you are not my brother. He repeats. So I said, look, these are rhetorics. These are rhetorics. You can also pass my statements also as a rhetoric. But coming to the main point, 
you see, about every being born, everybody born in sin. I said, this is the Christian concept. We do not believe so. And the Bible doesn't teach so. You see, in the book of Luke, first chapter, Elizabeth and her husband, you read there twice, Elizabeth, it says, was sinless. And her husband, Zechariah, was sinless. Jesus speaks about Abel. Is it from righteous Abel to Zechariah? You kill the prophets. Who the Jews? He, did he say righteous? Did he say righteous? Is in your book. If he says righteous, that means he was what was speaking with a tongue in his cheek. He was bluffing the people. If he said righteous, then they must have been righteous. So you say everybody is a sinner. I said, look, why should you, you know, label everybody with the same brush? Paint everybody with the same brush. You have no right to do that. And God Almighty tells us in the Bible, in the book of Ecclesiastes, he says, he the Lord had made man upright, but he had sought out many inventions. These are all your concoctions, your creation. He didn't make you so. If he created us as sinners, then what right has he to expect us to get up and walk straight? If I'm born a sinner, I'm weighted down with the lodestone of sin, and he wants, expects me to wait, walk straight. I say, he's unjust. He's unjust. A God who loads me up, you load your little child and say, come on, straight up, straighten up. You got a, a soldier's haversack on his back. You know, you're a four-year-old, a five-year-old, and the poor fellow is almost, you know, uh, meeting the ground. And you say, why don't you stand up straight and walk? He says, you are unjust. We'll say, you are a lunatic. God Almighty, if he does the same thing to us, he also will describe him as a lunatic. You see, this idea of sin inherited, this is Christianity. You talk about the original sin, the sin came into the world. But the Bible doesn't say that. In the book of Ezekiel, God says, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Have you heard that before? Yes. Every Christian preacher, lecturer, evangelist quotes this. And he puts a full stop. He puts a full stop in a verse which has no full stop. See, where it's supposed to be a comma or a semicolon, the Christian puts a full stop. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Then he takes you out from there into Corinthians, Philippians, Galatians, and he says, everyone has sinned. So everyone dies unless somebody comes along and redeems him of that curse. I said, look, listen, read it further. He says, the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father. Neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. Father Adam, he made a mistake. Mother Eve made a mistake. And they paid more than the full price. If he, somebody goes and plucks some fruits in your garden, they were told not to, what do you do? You chase the child out, you might give it a spanking, but now you follow that child up, his children and his children, and his grand, great grandchildren for eternity. <laughs> Can you imagine a God like that, a Shylock, worse than a Shylock? Adam and Eve, they sinned. So God kicks them out of the garden. I'm asking, is that not punishment enough? Then he curses them, that you woman, you must bear children in pain and suffering, labor, uh, for, for, for what you have done. And man, you must sweat for your bread. And we are all sweating and you are all laboring. As a result of what Adam and Eve did. Is, not, is that not enough? No, not for this Shylock of a God that you convey to us. He goes on now and said, every human kind on earth must go to hell. At the beginning of 1986, we were 4.8 billion human beings on earth. And everyone goes to hell, says the Christian. For what? For the original sin. Unless you believe in Christ. I'm asking, did Eve ask you, my sister, before eating the apple? Did she? No. Did Adam ask you before eating the apple? No. <laughs> then I said, how can God hold you responsible? Is he a lunatic? This God of ours, is he a lunatic? He's going to hold me responsible for what Adam and Eve did when I was not consulted. I don't know if you were consulted by Eve, then you have a right to be cursed. <laughs> what kind of a God is this? So he says, says the, uh, and the father shall not bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him. Whatever good thing the good man does, he gets his reward. And the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. But if the wicked will turn, from all the sins that he has committed and do that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Did you read that in your Bible? Do you read that in your Bible? Book of Ezekiel, yeah. chapter 20. But righteousness is also as much of a free gift as faith is in, Christian, in the Christian understanding. Righteousness is a gift from God, just like eternal life is a gift from God. So we don't have righteousness on our own. 
when you compare my sister. Look, you see, the Christian world has really gone down the drain, according to Jimmy Swaggart. According to his books, you must read them. If you haven't got them, you must get them. On sodomy, homosexuals, get that. On pornography, get it. On incest, get it. On alcohol, get it. And he's telling you, America, he's telling America, he says, America, he says, God must judge you. And if he doesn't, he said, he might have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah for what he did to them. This is Jimmy Swaggart talking. This is where you have gone. After 2,000 years of Christianity, look, you're sodomites. Here in New York, you have one million more women than men. If every man in New York gets married, there'll be one million women who can't get husbands. Yeah. And out of your manpower you have here, one third are gays, sodomites. One third are gays. Your prison population, 98% are men. And men will have cold feet for so many different reasons. Can you imagine your problem? There are 7.8 million more women in America than men. If every man in America got married, there will still be 7.8 million who can't get husbands. And we know every man will never get married. You know that for so many reasons. So there are about 20 million more women in America who can't get husbands. 20 million who can't get husbands. What's the solution? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, what's wrong with you? Are you sick? The person is hungry, you say hallelujah, and his stomach will be filled. The woman, she needs man, and you say hallelujah, and her, 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 she'll be satisfied. There's something wrong with you. You had, I give the figure, 44 million, 45 million, according to Jimmy Swag, 